Hey, this is Josh for The Camera Project, and today we're going to be talking about macro photography. So technically, a macro lens is a lens that can reproduce a ratio of at least one to one. But in less technical terms, it's just extreme close-up photography. Now, a lot of other types of photography are very location heavy. Things like landscape, where you just want to find the beautiful, perfect vista. The cool thing about macro, you can make cool subjects out of just your own backyard or your own kitchen. So if you don't feel like going on a big trip, you can kind of do macro anywhere. Today we're just going to be keeping it pretty simple. We're starting out with the Olympus OMD EM5 Mark II and the Olympus 60mm f2.8 macro. It's 120mm in full frame equivalents, so it's a nice compromise between getting close to subjects but not too close and helps when you're shooting things like bees or something that you don't want to obviously get too close to. All right, so we've got these flowers here and we've got a bunch of bees flying around. I'm trying to give them enough distance where I'm safe, but also get close enough where we can really take advantage of shooting macro here. So I've got two right there and several others flying around. So hopefully I don't get stung, but um, I'll show you guys what it looks like through video on the camera. So I'm just gonna go over to video mode. The thing you're going to find with macro is that it's this constant balance between depth of field, shutter speed, and ISO. For a moving subject like this, I can't let my shutter speed dip too low because I want to freeze the action. I also need to keep my depth of field fairly high so I can get the whole B in focus, and I also want to keep my ISO as low as possible. So I'm kind of in late afternoon light. So we're going to see what balancing those elements looks like. I'm going to switch over to manual just because I find with macro there's so many of these elements you need to balance it kind of helps to have full control over everything. So I'm switching over to the viewfinder. Right now I'm at ISO 2000, f5.6 and 160 is my shutter speed. And One of them just buzzed at me. Hopefully not pissing them off. All right, now one thing I'm gonna do to try to maximize my depth of field is instead of shooting from this angle, I'm gonna shoot overhead. So the bee's body is more on one plane. So let's try that out. Getting a little too close for comfort for him, I think. Back away slowly, give him some space. I'm sure there's gonna be some like bug nerds writing in that of course that's a female and a male wouldn't be out here. Alright, let's try to get the face. So I'm just keeping the camera in autofocus right now. This is not the fastest focusing lens, here's two of them. But it does have these focus limiting switches. So what it has is you can go to one to one here where you could tell it I want to limit it between 0.19 and 0.4 meters, which is its closest focusing range, or 0.19 to infinity. So right now I have it on the 0.19 to 0.4, keeping that focusing range a little more limited. Let's take a few more shots before I back away from these guys and give them some space. So one thing I really do like about this lens is this focusing ring. The focusing steps on it are so small that you can really dial in your focus, and that's great for when I'm shooting video here. If I switch it over to manual focus and I use the focus peaking to make sure everything's nicely in focus, this ring has such subtle adjustments that it really lets me dial in that focus at that really close level. And of course, it's a macro lens, so yeah, it makes sense, but it does it really well combined with the focus peaking on the EM5 Mark II. I wanted to show you guys another bit of macro here. We've got our giant video head tripod here shooting with our macro sized Sony RX100. So uh, yeah, that's what we're shooting most of this episode on. All right, so for this, we're gonna introduce a new piece of gear, but it's a relatively inexpensive piece of gear and that's just any kind of travel tripod. It doesn't need to be anything spectacular. Uh, obviously a good tripod is going to serve you well, but this is just something, it's around $120, and I like it because it's a nice travel tripod, it's light, it folds up really small, and the legs invert to keep it really small in the bag. So that's what we're using today because the big video tripod is doing the shooting over there. So here I just have some herbs, and we've got some caterpillars. Again, nothing that's really that interesting to look at from afar, but once you get close, it gets interesting. So let's check it out. 
And of course, macro, like any other type of photography, you have to consider what your background is, whether you want to knock it out of focus with some shallow depth of field, if it's too busy. In this case, it's a whole lot of green, so you know it's not too bad no matter what I do. And I'm gonna let it go as slow as a 30th of a second, and I'm going to check my exposure. Now, right now I'm on ISO 250, 30th of a second, f2.8. This angle, I actually kind of do like the shallow depth of field with f2.8. I'm just gonna bring my ISO up a hair more to 320, and that gets me proper exposure. So I'll take that shot, and as an extra precaution, I'm gonna go into my camera's menu, and instead of shooting in single mode, I'm just gonna shoot it over at two second timer. I do have a remote release, but I don't have it on me this second, so let's just try it like this. That'll just help to combat any handshake I might be introducing to the shot. Here's a little bit of a leaf blocking my subject in the foreground, so let's just slightly recompose. And I still don't like that leaf in the foreground. And let's see where I can go, where I kind of get rid of that. Maybe I'll come around this side. Yeah, I like that. That's nice. All right, so now we're introducing kind of all of the gear that we're gonna be using for the day. Still trying to keep it relatively inexpensive, but I've taken a flash here. This is the Olympus FL600R flash. And the reason I'm using this flash is because it has this sensor. And what that does is it allows you to have this tiny flash that's included with the camera to trigger it and it will actually trigger this flash to fire remotely. But the cool thing about it is you can also control all of your settings remotely from the camera without any wires. So I can switch my camera over to what's called RC mode and just dial in my flash settings without ever actually touching the flash. The other thing I'm gonna introduce at this point is this guy. It's a flash bender of sorts. Uh, that would be the sort of name brand for it. This one was just a cheap Amazon version. I don't do a ton of flash photography, so I just went with this cheap version, five or 10 bucks, and you just kind of Velcro it on to the top of the flash, and what this allows you to do is to bounce the flash onto your subject as opposed to going a direct flash, which would be really harsh, especially at these distances. So I'm just gonna use the ball head on the tripod here just to sort of angle the flash so that it's bouncing and it's not hitting the subject at all. Now right here we have some really, really poorly failed cucumber plants, but there are a few tiny little cucumbers on here. So again, I'm gonna throw my camera over to manual mode. Make sure that it's in RC mode as well, so I know that I'm triggering this flash from this flash, and I can control all the settings on the camera. Now when you're shooting with flash, it introduces even more complications. So not only are you controlling your aperture, which controls, in theory, the power of the flash, you're controlling your shutter speed, which controls how much ambient light you're allowing in, not how much flash, but the sum of the total is what will get you your exposure. So what I'm gonna do is I have my ISO all the way down at ISO 200. I'm gonna shut the flash off to see what the photo looks like, kind of without any flash, just so I know. Now this might wind up being the picture that I like the best, who knows? I'm shooting at ISO 200, f2.8, and a shutter speed of 200. I can see I'm way underexposed, and if I bump it up to 250th of a second, I'll shoot it again. Yeah, that's really underexposed. So now I can kind of figure out just what my flash is doing to my picture. Now, if I go to my settings here, I can see I'm at 1 6th power. So let's just see what that looks like. I'll turn this flash back on. And again, I'm just set to autofocus. And that's overexposed. So I can either dial my flash power or I can dial my aperture. So I'm gonna do the aperture and get a slightly deeper depth of field and also turn down the power of my flash effectively. And I'm gonna bring it down to F5.6 and see what that looks like. And that's a lot better exposure wise, but I don't love the look of it. It's kind of unnatural. So I feel like moving the light up a little will help it feel a little bit more natural. So let's just try moving the light a hair so it's coming from overhead. 
something a little bit nicer. It still has a bit of an artificial feel to me. I'm not a master at using flash. As I said before, I don't use flash very often. So I wanna try sort of the ambient version of this as well. I'm gonna shut my flash on camera off. I'm gonna to go to my menu. I'm gonna shut RC mode so it's not firing. And let's try this again. And now I really have to, it's getting later in the day, I really have to bring my ISO up so I can handhold this. ISO 1250, I'm still at 5.6, one stop underexposed. It's actually pretty nice, I, I like that. I don't know if I'm gonna need the extra exposure in there, but let's just try it at F4, just to get me a little bit extra in there. Now I'm properly exposed, and I'm just gonna shoot this one, and shoot this one. What I like about this second one is the background does get further away, so it's kind of a simpler background in a way. Yeah, and I'm happening to like these sort of natural exposures, but the flash does give you a lot of cool capability. I've done things as simple as putting it on an LED light where you have sort of this backlight and a flash filling in the foreground. So I was shooting some pictures of goldfish from the kitchen. I was shooting some pictures of lemons. And things like that can be really cool where you don't expect this sort of natural lighting from it. This garden setting, I'm kind of liking the more natural feel. I'd probably be better off doing less of a full flash exposure if I want to use flash and just doing more of a fill light with it to help me boost up my settings. So let's try that. I'm going to keep my shutter speed around that 1 50th of a second. And I'm going to dial my flash power down. I'll start at 1 16th and see what that looks like. It's way overexposed. So let's see what it does if I take my aperture to 5 6 to make it a little bit darker overall. That's nice. I think I still like the natural exposure best, but it's getting nicer when you balance that flashlight with the ambient light. So I hope you guys like shooting some macro here. The Olympus 60 millimeter f2.8 is a really sharp lens. You can shoot it wide open and it's a really nice exposure and I've really liked shooting with it over the past couple weeks. So I hope you guys check it out and if you have any questions, please let me know. As I said, macro is a highly technical subject so I'm sure you will have some, but let me know. I'd be glad to answer your questions for you.